I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now today is the 30th of November, the last day of the month of November. Meaning by 12 midnight today, we are stepping into the 1st of December, the last month of the year. Now, you know, we normally have our fasting and prayer meeting on the 1st. Actually, we start midnight on the 31st. That means tonight at 12 midnight, we start the prayer meeting. And then we pray at every watch. We pray from 12 midnight to, if we pray from 12 midnight, and then the next time we pray is, is at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9 p.m., which is the last watch. Now, we usually pray for 40 minutes to 50 minutes at every interval. I encourage you to join us tonight. And because so we are starting a new thing, God is beginning a new thing. Praise God. And I also told you that from the second, after we're done with this, from the second, we are launching our 24 hours, 247 prayer watch. And I've told you that if you are stirred up to join us in that prayer meeting, choose your hour. The website is on your screen. Now for the prayer meeting today, the Zoom link is also on your screen so you can you can get the user the, the zoom id and the passcode and join us to pray it is important now god gave us this instruction and we have been doing this thing this is the second year we are doing this and the spirit of god told us it's giving him the first fruits that day and making that day fresh food unto the Lord. And guess what? If the fresh food is holy, the whole month, praise God, is going to be holy. If you give God charge of that first day, oh, trust me, He is going to take charge of the whole month for you. And at every watch, we pray for different things. And we've been receiving testimonies upon testimonies for this prayer meeting. So I encourage you, don't miss this month's own praise God. Now, can we call for that daily bread? Can we make that request? Join me right now in faith as we make this demand. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I've been commanded by the Lord to share what I started sharing with you on Monday. And that's from Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 and 6. God is assuring you. Now, if this, listen, you must enter the month of December with this mindset. And what is that mindset? He has said, praise God, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It doesn't matter what you have done. He won't forsake you. Oh, Pastor Tubo, you don't understand. If you know what I have done, you will not say what you're saying. Have you, you know, I always use this example. Have you considered Cain? You know, you know, time that you, you just have to learn how to consider. Praise God. Have you considered Cain? Cain killed his brother Abel. And when he did that, he wasn't repentant. He wasn't remorseful. He killed his brother and was just going about his business. He didn't go to God and say, God, oh, I've done something terrible. No! The word of the Lord came to him. God spoke to Cain after he killed Abel. And God was not responding to his repentance. God was not responding to his soberness. God came to him and said, Cain, where is your brother? So he was still hearing God after he killed his brother. 
Now, I know people who go, God have caught fellowship with me. Why? I did something wrong. And since then, God has not spoken to me again. Uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. It is not consistent with his character. It's okay. It's just about Cain. And, and guess what? You know, you know the truth? He spoke to Cain, not to tell Cain that, look, Cain, I will deal with you. I will finish you. He actually spoke to Cain to see how he can help, how he can redeem him. Oh, yeah. That's why, that's why he spoke to Cain. Cain, where is your brother? Oh, am I my brother's keeper? I see he was still rude and arrogant. And God didn't say, you see your rudeness. No, God says, right. but I'm hearing the, the voice of your brother crying to me from the ground. What have you done? And God began to tell him the consequences of his action. God did not punish him. God did not curse him. God was telling him that the earth have cursed you because of what you have done. So it was the earth that cursed Cain. You see that now? Another example. David sinned against God. And guess what? It was God that sent words to him. <laughs> Praise God through the prophets. So now you see, God never left them. Why? Because that's what he promised. He doesn't leave you because you have done some wrong. No, he is consistent with his personality. He has assured you that he will never leave you. And because he has assured you he will never leave you, bless God, he will never do it. He has said he will never forsake you, bless God, he will never do it. Praise God. Now, what do you do with his presence with you? Oh, someone now, someone just say, eh, so you mean anything I do, God will not leave me. No, he will not leave me. Ah, okay now, let me go and do whatever I want to do. No, now you see, when you live your life that way, you are just getting yourself into more trouble. Not because God is going to leave you, no, but because you will get yourself in that place where your confidence in him will be destroyed. Because you will be there telling yourself that, look, just like many people think, God has left me. And they go down the pits. Now, they can't believe that truly, not, not because God is not speaking to them, but they cannot receive his word anymore. It's not about God, it's about them. And like I told you last week, you know, you get yourself so entangled in situations where even if God wants to save you, you will be unwilling to yield to his salvation. Lots of things that have happened to a lot of believers and tra entrapped, entrapped them and they begin to interpret it as God's judgment for their lives. Not necessarily. God is always out to save you. But you see, there are other things that bring about judgment in your life. But as for God, He's a consistent Savior. He's a consistent, merciful God. He will never change from that. If you approach God today and ask him for mercy, he's surely going to give you mercy. But you see what people think, and that's the problem with a lot of people. I'm sharing this with you because a new chapter is about to open in your life. So let go of these old things. So a lot of people don't understand what mercy is. See, oh God, oh God, give me mercy, show me mercy, show me mercy. And then it felt cool and it felt calm in the hand. Like, I believe God has heard me. He has shown me mercy. No, he has not shown you mercy yet. He has just forgiven you. Forgiveness and the show of mercy, they are not the same thing. A man can be forgiven and yet not shown mercy. But you see, to receive mercy, and that's another thing, you can be shown mercy, but you don't receive mercy. And that's always the most difficult part. I told you the problem has never been with God. The problem has always been with you. Now, you go to God and say, Lord, I, I did some wrong. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. God said, oh, I forgive. He will not not forgive you. It, he can never say he's holding it against you. 
No, praise God. Now it's okay. So I forgive you. Okay, Lord. Can you show me mercy? Oh, I'll show you mercy. Now, mercy is the practicality of or his act, or it's his practical act to show how he has forgiven you. So now, and, and this is how mercy works. Mercy comes by instruction. Mercy comes by instruction. Now, by your actions, you may, may have lost some privileges or you may, may have lost some things. Now, in the display of God's mercy, he will instruct you on things that will get you back or get you back those things you lost. Then the question is, when God begins to give those instructions that relate with mercy, Will you be bold or courageous enough to answer him? Because when he wants to show you mercy, mercy will test your repentance. Because mercy follows repentance. Mercy doesn't follow forgiveness. Mercy follows repentance. If you don't repent, you won't see the mercy of God. Even though God will forgive you. Now, Jesus actually said, Peter asked him, how many times will a man offend me before I forgive him? He says, seven. He said, no, 70 times, seven times. Now, Jesus there just displayed the character of God to us and telling us, God is going to forgive you. It doesn't matter how many times you wrong him. But forgiveness does not automatically mean mercy. Mercy will come when you repent. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because when you repent, repentance means change your ways. Now, as long as you are still on that path, a simple illustration I would like to always give when I talk about this. If you are walking, and you step on someone's foot. And the person says, oh, you stepped on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you. But then, what's going to guarantee, what's your guarantee that you're not going to step on that person's foot again? Now, that will only happen when you repent. Now, how do you repent in that situation? Okay, why did I step on his foot before? I think when I walk, I don't look down. I, I always look up when I walk. So I didn't see his, his leg was there, so I just stepped on his foot. So from now on, when I walk, I'm going to try to look down. I'm going to be aware of my surrounding. I'm going to be aware of now what is that? That is you repenting. So now because you look down, it will be difficult for you to make the same mistake you made before. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, because you have changed your way of walking, then God can release mercy to you. You see that? So it's not about, oh, I've asked God for forgiveness. Say, me, I know one thing about God, though. Anytime I ask him to forgive me, he always forgives me. Yes, he will forgive you, but you will not enjoy mercy. I say that again. Mercy always follow repentance not forgiveness you must understand that about the personality of god and how you live your life praise god our time is up hey, time just went so fast praise god well you know what don't forget to join us this evening by 12 midnight as we begin our 24-hour prayer watch uh, uh for the for the first of the month of December. Listen, God has great plans for the month of December. And I'm going to be sharing with you during the prayer meetings what the Lord has said concerning the month of December. Trust me, you will like it. Praise God. Listen, I'll see you by 12 midnight today. The information you need is on the screen. Take note of them and join us later today. God bless you. I love you so much. Bye.